give you honor. We give you adoration. We declare that you alone are God, the only true, the only living God, the maker of the heavens and the earth and everything that is in them, the God who so loved the world that you gave your only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Thank you, my Father God, for Jesus Christ, the author and the finisher of our faith. Thank you, Father, because of Jesus, you have given us your Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Sonship by whom we call you Abba, Father. We give you praise today. We give you honor. We give you adoration for waking us up this morning in the land of the living and for bringing us into your presence today, O God, to be a part of today's program, this Health Awareness Seminar. Lord, it is your will that we prosper in all things and be in health even as our souls prosper. Lord, we welcome the Holy Spirit in our midst today. We welcome him as our guide, as our director, as our leader today. Holy Spirit, have your way in our midst today. Open our ears to hear your voice today. Instruct us today. Educate us today on ways we can improve. Lord, our health, our lifestyles for longevity. Lord, you instructed your people about what they should eat and not eat. You instructed your people about what is clean and not clean, and you have good reasons for, for giving them those instructions. Lord, we commit to this program and proceedings unto you. Glorify your name in our midst today. Holy Spirit, manifest your presence, your power, and your glory. Let everything be done decently and in order today. And let your name and your name only be glorified. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Please be seated, be seated. Um, my apologies that we are starting late. And uh, that's partly due to the fact that we'll be waiting for a few more people to come and uh, uh, we will get started and uh, see how far uh, we can uh, go today with the program we have drawn up. We had planned to actually start 12 on the dot, but that's not exactly the case just now. And um, just by way of uh, uh, outlining our program for today, we are going to, I'm going to be calling on the first speaker um, to come up shortly. And she will speak for about 30 minutes. And then after that, we will have uh, something like a 10 minutes break. It's supposed to be 15, but we'll cut it down to 10. And um, I believe uh, Brother Kunle, and I can see Sister Dupe here this morning, who are supposed to be facilitating uh, a break, a power walk. And uh, Brother Kunle is here, and I'm sure he, he will... Uh, uh, show us what to do then. And then the second speaker will be introduced and uh, she will speak for about 15 minutes, but she will have at least 40 minutes to demonstrate. She's uh, set up her, you know, uh, food stuff and uh, materials in the kitchen and she will be doing her uh, presentation and demonstration from the kitchen, and we will sit down here and uh, be able to watch it on our white screen. And then we will have a question and answer session once our sister is done, and uh, we will probably have another 10 minutes of uh, comfort break. And uh, the question and answer session will uh, come up as much as possible, or let me say, we would rather that you don't ask any questions once the presentations are going on we have a whole 40 minutes allocated to question and answers today. You may want to jot down, you know, uh, any questions you want to ask the uh, speakers today, and uh, they will have ample time to address your questions. And I'm sure uh, we will have a very formative uh, time here today. So without much ado, I'm going to call on Dr. Christian Aride, who is a GP, somebody I have known since the early 80s. We were in the university together, and uh, we have been close friends over the years. And uh, she's a very clever girl, I can tell you that. 
and uh, she's a lecturer and uh, a consultant and uh, whatever, and uh, she will be a blessing to us today. And above all, she's a very, very committed uh, Christian. So let's put our hands together as our sister, Christy Aride, comes to the pupit. Okay. Thank you so much for the introduction. And before I start my presentation, I just want to echo what the pastor, your pastor has said, and my brother, your pastor, my brother, and a friend, and the wife as well. We've known ourselves for a very, very long time. And the friendship is a friendship that describe the type of friendship the Bible talks about. When you have a friend, a friend that identifies with you in your challenges and in your good times, you know that that's a friend. Along the line, we've been friends for a long time, as your pastor said. Um, we've been the three of us, the wife and myself, we've been friends from university days. And there's one thing that I remember, I don't know whether he remember, but I remember and it stuck with me. I came into England for a program for two years. And towards the end of the program, I said to him, I said, look, the program is almost over. I'm going back home. And she said, what did you say? I said, Yes, my program is finished and I'm going back home. He said, okay, no problem. Just leave the children with me and you can go. That is the type of heart that he has, a heart of good. So I just thank God for his life and the wife's life. And above all, I thank God that God has kept us to this thing. So without wasting your time, I'm going to go straight to the presentation and the topic as we know is Health Awareness Seminar, Heart and Kidney Inseparable Relationship. Within the time limit that I'm given, I'm going to go through one. Can you go into the objective, please? Exploration of inseparable relationship between our hearts and kidneys, the heart structure, the kidney structure, how they work together, and factors affecting both of them. And then that will lead us to the NHS uh, health check. So, you will see the diagram. First of all, I'm just going to talk about the, uh, the structures that we can see there. I don't know how many of us are doctors, nurses, paramedic, any? Right, okay, so I'm just going to go through basic structure without going into details. So when we are talking about the heart, before we talk about the relationship, the inseparable relationship between these organs, let us see what the organs are. So first of all, we have the, the heart and we have the kidneys. The kidneys are just the muscular um, organs that is the engine of our bodies, the pump, the blood. And if you look at this uh, structure there, there are four chambers. You have the atrium, you have the ventricle, so that's the right atrium, the left ventricle, the right ventricle, left atrium, and left ventricle. And how do the kidneys come into play with the four chambers of the heart? So the kidneys are the kidney-shaped structure on both sides of the spine, just below the back. They are kidney shape, and they contain a lot of structures we call um, nephrons. I'm not going to go into details, but suffice to say that this kidney then passes urine what we don't need in the body when we eat, when we drink excessive a product or what is not necessary, it's passed through the, uh, the a ureter, 
that's the structure that passes the urine from the kidney down into our bladder before we pass the urine out. So how do they work together? So having known the structure of the heart that they contain four chambers and we have the kidney. So how did they work together? How, because our topic is inseparable relationship between these two organs. So how did they work together? And what sort of factors that affect them? So we have the right atrium here. So the kidney filters out what we don't need and then passes through the urine and then it comes back with all the substances that are collected while the blood was passing through the body comes through to the right atrium. The right atrium then contrasts and pushes the blood, all the blood that the kidney has filtered out and they've gone into all various cells in the body. It passes through the right atrium and it comes to the right ventricle. The right ventricle passes this blood, this oxygenated, that is there's no oxygen because these this cells in the body, while the blood is traveling around, has trapped what they need. So the, the heart pushes it to the lungs, and then there, you have oxygen. And then once you have the oxygen, then it passes through to the left kidney after the whole uh, blood has gone through the cells that are needed. And then the oxygenated blood then comes into the left atrium, then goes into the left ventricle and then goes back to the body again. So that's how the kidneys and the heart works. So why are we interested in them? Why are they inseparable? How do they work together? So there are various factors that could affect these two organs that we're talking about. So for example, if the kidney is not functioning because the kidney is supposed to be pushing out excessive fluid that we don't need, chemicals that we don't need. So if the kidneys are not working properly, you find that there will be retention of fluid in the body. And it can cause a strain on the heart. And the heart might not be able to function uh, properly. So you have um, high blood pressure. You have um, heart failure because the heart is not actually pumping and the relationship we described before is affected. So if the heart is affected, the kidney is also affected. So there are some factors that can cause this vicious cycle. So for example, high blood pressure, diabetes, high cholesterol, obesity. If our weight and our height is not really appropriate for our heart, or our height, that would be a problem. So all this will impact on this organ. So for example, if the heart is so weakened because we have a lot of fluid that the kidney is not getting rid of, then the heart will not be strong enough to pump blood back into the kidney. And if the kidney is dehydrated, then you have a problem. So there's this interrelationship between two of them. Right, so what are the factors that are affecting these um, organs? And that will bring us to the NHS, the concept of the NHS health check. Because we know that if we sort of pick up risk factors that can affect these organs, then people will live a healthier life and there will be less burden on the NHS for disease condition, chronic diseases. So that's the sort of concept of the NHS. So what is the NHS program? What is it all about? I don't know, does any of us know have we been to the NHS health check? Has any of us here been to the NHS health check before? Hands? Right. Good. So what is it? It's just a preventative health assessment where 
they want to assess risk factor that can be prevented before these chronic diseases can appear and it can be sort of eliminated at least if not but to be picked up early so who are the people eligible for nhs health check people from the age of 40 to 74 they are eligible and it's every five years and what do you do what is the component of the NHS health check. So you have blood pressure. You want the blood pressure check because you want to see, like we said about the relationship, inseparable relationship between the kidneys and the heart. If there's any factor like high blood pressure or stroke, you know, it can be picked up early and it can be treated. Another component of the NHS health check, apart from the blood pressure, is cholesterol check to make sure because cholesterol, if it's high, it can block the, the arteries in the heart. And we, we talk about the relationship between how the heart is uh, a pumping engine. So if the cholesterol should block the arteries that we impart on the heart and at the same time, the vicious cycle, we also impart on the kidney. So you check. They, they do check the cholesterol as well. And then uh, they check the weight to make sure that your height and your weight is appropriate. And if it's not, it can cause problems for your kidney or for the heart. So they try to do something about it. They also talked about your lifestyle. Smoking, that might not be related to this audience or alcohol, but these are general things and diet and your lifestyle, whether you work or whether you do exercise and all that. So that's part of the component as well. And then family history. I noticed that uh, family history, sometimes people just purposely fall back their family history because they just feel, oh, you want to know whether my dad died of a stroke. You know, I reject it in Jesus' name. You know, I'm not going to tell them that. No, it's not because um, <laughs> it's not because they automatically say, okay, because if your father died of stroke, so because of that, you will, you will die. I, I think I will deviate a bit from my presentation to talk about barriers that can cause uh, people not attending the NHS health check. And one is faith. And I just feel that actually, as Christians, our faith should actually make us to actually attend because if, we, if they find anything, unlike the unbeliever who doesn't have hope and doesn't have faith, you can say, okay, thank God. Thank God that this has been said, but I know God, whatever they have said, I'm going to hold on to you. So we have that support as Christians to actually stand and say, you know what? Yes, we find out it, but it doesn't mean that it has to happen. God, what is it? What is it that I'm going to do? Strengthen me. Give me the faith. Give me the wisdom to do what I need to do. But unbeliever, I mean, they may not really have that faith. But I just find that faith is actually a barrier to NHS uptake by some Christian. I am not talking about you in this congregation, but I know of a lot of Christians that don't. And they just say no, especially family history. No, 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 no. If that is, my father had that, so what? No, I'm not telling them. Please do tell them because it's very, very important because it will, it will help. I'll come back to barriers later if we have time, but I'll, I'll continue with my presentation. So we've talked about uh, blood pressure. We talk about um, weight. We talk about cholesterol and blood sugar as well. It's another component that they check. And we talk about uh, family history and then the lifestyle as well. And then what is the goal when um, you attend, uh, depending on what risk factors they find out, they will then uh, sort of, with you, plan a sort of goal. So for example, if your weight is not appropriate for your height, they may say, okay, so what, are you going to do in the next six months? What needs to change for you to get to your or normal height and weight ratio or something like that? So the goal depends on what was found during the 
a presentation. And then monitoring, uh, depending on what is found, they may say in six months, a, a comeback, or maybe there and there, they may say, oh, you know what, the cholesterol is about 8.5. I think uh, you need to go to a special uh, uh, clinic, a cholesterol clinic, because this is not something to be managed in primary care. So it depends on what is found, so the monitoring. Then what, what, is the, um, what is the benefit? What's the benefit of the NHS? One, individually, you know, if you, blood pressure is something that you don't really have symptoms of. Some people, they have high blood pressure, you don't know, they just, sometimes they just have stroke. Amongst our people, the black uh, community, when they have high blood pressure, like um, the white, they may have maybe heart problem, but for the black, it's just stroke without any symptoms at all. So the benefit is at least you will pick up something that you can deal with before it becomes a problem. And also generally is, is a less burden to NHS because if somebody has a, a pre-diabetes, for example, they can go to the pre-diabetic a, a program and then the person will never develop diabetes. But if that was not done, then it, they will just have a full-blown diabetes. That opportunity is lost. So it's a way of trying to make sure that we have that um, opportunity to pick up a problem at a very early stage. Um, what else about NHS? I think that's just a brief about the NHS section. Then I want to go back again to barriers that may cause people not to um, have uptake of the NHS health check. I've talked about faith that it could act both ways. Some people might say, well, I don't want to because of my faith. I don't want them to tell me any negatives. So some people may say, actually, let me know. I know that I can actually talk to God and God will help me and all that. And whatever they said that I need to do, I will do it. So our faith should actually make it possible, should be a positive factor, not a hindrance to the NHS health check, because I just feel that it's God that give the doctors, or the nurses, the wisdom, you know? And I, I, I was just telling someone that, look, even it's true that Christ, you know, woke up people that were dead, that you know what, people were raised, from dead, Christ did that. We saw the example, and we and even today we know that some people have the gift, but not many people have the gift that when people die, you you pray for them and they come to life again. But because a Christ, you know, raised people from the dead during His own time, and there are some people who have the a gift, does it mean that we can make use of anesthetists? Our anesthetists, the doctors that put people to sleep. They know they, they put them to sleep and they wake them up. As we are talking now, there are some doctors that are doing that in the hospitals. So we wouldn't say because that happened before, we should not make use of anesthetists. That, oh, you know, as a Christian, what? You want to do what? Specialize in what? Oh, no, 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 no. No, we don't. I think it's something that we should actually thank God for, that God has given us the wisdom and we should use it. And also we travel by plane as well. When Philip was transported and he found himself in the desert, are we going to say because that happened in the Bible, now we should not travel by plane anymore? You know, so I think we should balance our faith. And another barrier that people don't take up NHS a health check is busy. Recently, uh, there was one of our patients, but I like the patient because she spoke the truth. It wasn't about um, heart and kidneys, but as you know, all the organs, they interfere with uh, one another. It was a cervical smear. It's, this patient has been written to five years and she said it was busy. So one of the factors why people don't come for screening is because they say, oh, I'm busy, you know what? I work Monday to Sunday. I don't really have the time to go. and when she started bleeding, she, she took herself to a hospital. And they said, what happened? He said, look, 
I, 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 I will speak the truth because I, I read the letter when he came back from the hospital. That the doctor who saw her said, oh, the patient said that, oh, my doctor has been inviting me for the past, past five years, but I've been busy. That's why it's not, it's not my doctor's fault. So sometimes people say they are busy, but is it not easier to go for a health check for maybe 30 minutes, one hour, than to develop a condition that will be chronic that you will suffer throughout, that some of them might be very, very serious that may lead to death. So I'm just wondering that we have to have life first and health before we talk about being busy. I think a superstitious is another barrier because in the past, especially maybe not affecting this group, but there's some a group that feel that it's another way of trying to make the black people to be slaves. So because of that, anything that is screening, uh, you just feel that you know, uh, there's something behind it. I don't want to go at all. I spoke to a patient. I said, oh, please, you are actually due for your smear. Say, OK, I'm going to speak to my pastors first. If my pastor says I should do it, then I will. And he said, you know what? We have to separate this faith issue from what is necessary for you. I'm not saying that uh, we should not believe God, but at the same time, believing God doesn't mean that we have to be stupid. So, yes. So that's another um, thing I've seen that is a barrier to uptake of a screening program. So I think I will stop here for now, except Ah, okay, so okay, so I still have another five minutes. So another thing that I want to share is a new uh, model of care that is built around NHS health check, and that is in, con in consideration with those who have multiple comorbidities. That is, some people they have diabetes, they have hypertension, they have chronic disease, they have stroke, they ha their heart is um, breath um, beating irregularly. So if they keep on having each appointment to attend these six or seven comorbidities, you know, it will impact on their work and their life, you know, work-life balance. There are some people that they wouldn't allow them to be going for appointment each time. And then the, the do not attend rate will be very high. So there's a new model of care that just uh, started 1st of October. And what they do is that they will invite, they've, uh, they've listed out common uh, conditions that they feel that about 75% of the population suffer from, uh, diabetes, hypertension, chronic disease, uh, chronic obstructive disease, asthma, and asthma in adults and children, and atrial fibrillation, that is the heart is not beating very well or the thing has gone, you know, when the uh, heart's supposed to pump out. So if the heart is just uh, um, beating irregularly and infrequently, it might cause problems. So people, so they are now screening people for this sort of condition so that if, if uh, patients have seven of these conditions, for example, they might only attend appointment for only four, four appointments instead of seven or eight appointments. So what they do is that um, you come in, they screen you for a COPD if there's um, chronic obstructive airway disease. If you have a history like those who smoke for how many years and they are coughing, or people who are wheezing, they will screen them at the same appointment. They will check their blood pressure. They will take their cholesterol, they will weigh them, and then they will do blood tests associated with what is found in those conditions. So they will do the blood tests, examine them at the same time, and then the second time they will come in will be when uh, the results are out. And when the results are out, depending on what is found, then they will treat them. So instead of a single disease appointment, it's a sort of looking at the holistic view of the person. So it's not as if, oh, yes, 
this patient, oh, you have a kidney problem. Oh, you have diabetes. Oh, you have this. Okay, let's treat the compartment. As we said in our, in our topic, that is inseparable relationship between the kidney and the heart. So also it is for all the organs that we have, kidney, the heart, the lungs, you know, they are all working together. So that's a new model of care that they are doing. And I, I don't know in your area, once they start it, please do attend. And I think it will help us to live the life that God has given unto us. No matter how zealous we are for the things of the kingdom, if we don't have the health, even if we have that zeal to do it, we might not be able to do it. So please, let's take care of ourselves and let's take care of this gift of organs, the heart and the kidneys that the Lord has given unto us. God bless you all.
All right, this is the last song. Excellent, everyone. Okay. Amen. Clap for yourself. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. I can see some people are sweaty. <laughs> I am a sweat, but this is good. Can you imagine if we try to do this every day, 10 minutes, 15 minutes of, uh, wow, this is good. I will try my best. <laughs> we do it together. Excellent. Exactly, when you can't go out for a walk. So we put, uh, take the shackle off my feet. Excellent. Praise the Lord. Yes all coming together for our next session for the next 15 minutes. We're going to have our sister. I've listened to her. I've actually invited her to, uh, we brought my family together and she came and gave us, you know, a session on nutrition, living healthy lifestyle. So, and um, since I met her, I just felt it is something that would be good as a church um, for us to have her.
come and speak to us as a family. We will do the one we can do, and we leave God to do the rest. And some of the things we're doing today are the ones we can do when we leave God to do the rest. So without much ado, I'm going to invite our sister, Bola Ajewole, and, uh, to come and um, share with us. She will also be taking us through some sessions on how to cook quick, quick, you know, healthy food. So you don't have to wait to make that uh, African Ogbono before you can eat and uh, really be full. So you're very welcome. Let's give her a round of applause again. God bless you, sis. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you so much, Pastor. Gabriel, for the invite. Thank God for you. Sister Mercy, thank you so much, Ma. I'm so honored to be here today. Thank you so much to come to Healthy Living Day. May God continue to keep us healthy. We will not die young in the mighty name of Jesus. We fulfill all our destiny in Jesus' name. My name is Bola Ajewole. I'm a nutritional therapist and I'm a detox therapist. I'm a nurse by profession. But I've moved a little bit from the hospital to the farm now. Uh, the reason why I came to this ministry where what I'm doing now is mainly because I went through a health issue myself. At the age of 14, I was very sick. I was very sick up to 50. During the time I was turning to my 50th birthday, my workmates were gathering money together to give to my, to give to my family. You know, they're doing it secretly. They didn't let me know. But they told me after I passed 50 that they thought I wouldn't make it so they can use that money to bury me. But to God be the glory, here I am today. What I did that made me to be sick and what I did that made me to be better, I will explain it to you. Uh, majority of things that happen to us start from the gut. I don't know if you know that. It starts from what we put in our mouth, even though there's genetics as well. But one thing I've noticed in my journey with this ministry is that when there's flood, let's assume there's flood here now. You need to look at the source where the flood is coming from. You close that source. For example, if somebody have diabetic, you go to doctor, they give you metformin, it's not working, they increase the dose, change the tablet, it's still not working, then change maybe to insulin and all that. But what are we doing? What are we eating that is making us to have this blood sugar rising? What are we doing that's making this blood pressure continuously going up? Is it because we are not sleeping? Is it because we are stressed? A lot of things contribute to it. But we just go through the food part of it today. So, this is us and me. This is what I used to be. What is our normal standard breakfast? Be quick because of time. Bread, toast, thank you. Cereal, okay. Full English, okay. <laughs> okay. So we're just going to assume mainly what we do eat. Why do we eat? We eat for a purpose. Why? Energy, yes. To be strong, that's energy. To give the body what the body needs, yes. So let's assume breakfast time, we have bread, yes. Lunch time, we have rice. Dinner time, we have semo vita. Is that, not, is that something we do? Yes, okay. Now, when we have the bread in the morning, that bread was five, 700 grams of glucose. Whatever we eat, convert to glucose, yes. Lunch time, we had rice. That was 900 grams of glucose. Then the evening time, 1,000. That is excluding if we drink uh, apple juice, orange juice, we didn't add that to that. This is just a picture why we are sick sometimes, the root cause of the problem. So this is Monday, um, um, main food for Monday, Monday. Now, when we had 700 grams, only five, 
200 went in. We have extra 500 that the body did not need that utilized that time. Is that, are we making sense? Lunch time, we had 900. 300 was utilized. We have excess of 600. And when it's dinner time, we had 1,000. 300 was used, then 700 excess. So that was Monday. So on that Monday, how much extra do we have? So that would be 500 plus 600 plus 700. How much is that? 1,800. So Monday, 1,800 grams of glucose. Yes? So where is that going to stay for that day? It's going to stay just somewhere. So that stay in the liver and store as fat. Yes? So, so when it comes to Tuesday... If we don't eat, that comes out and we use it. That's why we can fast. You see people fasting for 40 days. They are just drinking water because they have excess storage of food, uh, sorry, of uh, glucose that has been stored as fat and have to go back, make use of it. But because our nature, we eat. Even when we finish eating, we are still hungry. Do you feel like that? I used to. Is because you know why we finish eating, then we go and look at the cupboard again and open the cupboard and say, ah, is there nothing in this house? We're looking for brisket, crackers. It's because what we are eating doesn't have any nutrient inside it. We eat all carbohydrates. The moment we start giving the body what the body needs, you cannot put petrol inside a diesel car. It won't move. But God is so merciful that we, we put all the cabbage inside his body, and he keep going. But the day the body said, I can't stand it anymore, that's the time. May God let, don't let us be, you know, there before we realize. So that's the, just the structure. So this starts liver fat. Now, the liver, the major job of the liver, do anybody know the major job of the liver apart from the doctor in the house? Do you know what the liver does? It's detox. Liver detox all the waste, continuously non-stop, yes? But now the liver is detoxing, but it's full of fat. Am I making sense? So it's not going to do the job. That means the fat is full. Then where is the fat that we are making on day-to-day -day basis goes? Just go around the body and goes around the body. Then the, the pancreas, the glucose, everything is just congested. When it's congested, the waste products turn into the body as inflammation. Then we start complaining, my leg, my shoulder, my this. Then what do we take? Prastamol. Then we take hypoprofine. Then we take something else. Is the body asking for those painkillers? No. All the body needs is to put the body back into the normal state where the body is supposed to be. Then what happened? After a long time, this glucose starts moving around in the body, moving around in the body. Then what does that become? Uh, diabetic. It takes about 15 years, ma, for all this, all this accumulation. For, you know, you get to a stage before you become pre-diabetic, then you don't look after that, then diabetic. It doesn't just yesterday. No, it's accumulation of a long time. So where is blood pressure coming from now? Now the blood, there's congestion there, there's thickness. The blood that is flowing now is thick because it's fatty. That's what I mean by thickness. It's not like water anymore. So this, this blood is now... Am I making sense? So here, the blood is thick. It's not that flowing like water, if you understand what I mean. So it's fatty blood. This is the artery that takes blood to the heart and the brain to every organ of the body. So now the fatty blood is going, is moving, but as it's moving, the narrowing is becoming narrow and narrowing. Is that, am I making sense? It's just constricting. Constricting. Why is it constricting? Because there's some fat coming closer, attach, attaching, attaching themselves to the artery. Yes? What is this? That's the cholesterol. Yeah? Then one day this shift. 
One day, this shift, if you shift to the heart, what is that? Heart attack. If you shift to the brain, what is that? Stroke. So, what can we do? What did I do? Anybody can tell me what can we do to make this better? We change our diet. So, from bread to... Bread to oat, then rice to that is great, that is great. Then some semovita to what? Pandoyam. All we have to do is to go back and start adding more greens. Yes? Adding more grains, more beans, nuts, good nuts, not peanuts. Add all this to whatever we are doing. We are going to go to the kitchen now and start. But one thing I want to reassure you today is, no matter what health condition you are going through, if you change what you are eating, it will turn around. You will get better. In the mighty name of Jesus. I had arthritis at the age of 35. They push it to 50, 55. When I got to 55, they told me, oh, I think don't, 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 uh, what's the right word now? Don't uh, pretend that you are, you are not in pain. I was limping. I was in pain. And God turned everything around just by changing what I eat. I had a client who came around to see me 15th of July. She's been injecting herself with insulin since one year ago, four times daily. She came around. And I just went through things with her. She changed her diet. She's going to see a doctor very soon. So God be the glory she has not injected the insulin. I'm not here to tell you don't take your medication. I'm here to tell you we are taking the medication, but it looks like it's not working. And they are increasing the dose day in, day out. All we have to do, let's change what we are doing. If we change it, our body will get back to normal state. And doctor will tell you, oh, your blood pressure that used to be 150, 160, it's now 110. It has dropped. I think we have to reduce your tablet. They, they, they don't really want to put you on tablets. It's just because they have to, because it's risky if they don't do that. May God help us. Thank you so much, Ma. God bless you. So we're going to the kitchen now. It's the most practical part. What I need? Up, up, up. Yes, sir. So you can see that the water is not staying. It's just getting away from the uh, broccoli. Now we're going to put a veggie spray on it. This veggie spray comes... This veggie spray comes as concentrated. This is diluted. Okay, now. Up, up. Water up. You can see that. For that little, so you can see. So it's always good to wash our veggie. If you buy frozen one, that means they froze it with the pesticide. So that's the advantage. Thank you.
We are going to use fish, which is sardine, for the cauliflower rice plate. If you are allergic to fish, don't eat it, please. We are using sardine for the cauliflower rice. If you have allergies, please don't eat the first meal that is coming. Once all this food is being prepped, it doesn't take long time at all, like our main bokoto and all that. This is very, very fast. You can see the colorful veggie are cut together. I'll tell you everything that is in here later. which is one of sodium glutamate which is not really great for our, our system so this is a uh, halo which is with no artificial coloring no flavor no preservative no additives at all and it's gluten and lactose free so i put two inside and with the blood pressure we have to be very careful of the salt we are using it's good to use salt use a good salt but be very mindful when you are using salt Rosemary and parsley. Rosemary is very good for circulation. Parsley is very good for feeding this stuff. After spinach. Which is very good 
for the heart. It helps the heart muscle to dilate. Whenever we use uh, turmeric, it's always used to, it's good to use black pepper to help it to uh, absorb. It's already and it's going to be mixed there, which we uh, self fry. Our next meal is plain to and um, chickpeas rice. The veggie is ready. I'm just going to have some uh, steamed chicken to that.
to different things so it's been turned to rice and uh, chickpeas as well you can use this as jollof rice you can use it as fried rice so you can enjoy it Are we good? It's good. It's it's sand. Yes. It's been well received. So don't want to do this. This is another process. So what is that one? See, look, that's the cauliflower rice. Right? Okay, that's, that's the one going to chop some. to rice if you remember the diagram instead of having rice rice all the time we can incorporate all these little things so this is chickpeas rice and this is lentil rice so this is going around second time 
So I would like to score people which one do you prefer out of all these men by the time we finish. Thank you. Pass the box around for people to see. I'm going to use the chicken fallow so it comes in different um, flavor. So I'm using the chicken, we we'll use the beef, we we'll use the veggie level one. So I'm using the chicken. Thank you. 
have some fried bit of curry. You just need to add everything little by little, little by little, not a lot. So. tomato and tomato puree which is ready made ready to go so i'm going to add it to the preparation now
I'm in the ministry, you just live. I read the other shit. Okay. So, the pasta, all the sauce is mixed. We just give it a bit of time to steam. Then that'll be ready for yummy yummy. Then this is going to be our bean curry. Coming up 
checking yeah. on you. Bye bye. See? Sister Dukbe, what's this last one you're distributing? This is cabbage. Uh, look at fried rice. Fried rice. So we don't have to use the rice. Okay. So we've got questions here. If you, if you still got some questions, please ask. I'll need somebody to... Another mic. So this question says, how often should we do blood tests to check for signs of blood pressure and cholesterol? So that question is for Dr. Sorry, what is the question again? How often should we do blood tests to check for signs of blood pressure and cholesterol? Okay, so if you're taking cholesterol tablets, at least before you start taking the cholesterol tablets, you should check your blood to look at your liver to make sure that you have a baseline liver function test that is normal because sometimes the cholesterol tablets will actually affect your liver function. So if you are about to start cholesterol tablet, your liver function test, there are components of the liver test that you check. And if it's more than three to five times the baseline, then you shouldn't actually take the cholesterol tablet. So the initial one blood test, you should take that before you start taking the cholesterol tablet. But if you are just having high blood pressure, uh, it depends on how high your blood pressure is, they may follow you up more often. But the blood test per se for the um, blood pressure may depend if your kidney is affected as well. So, and if the kidney is affected, they will check your early morning urine to see if you have a protein in the urine, and then they classify it into different level. If it's less than three, then it's normal. But if it's more than three, depending on the level, you might need to do your blood test often and the urine as well. But if the urine level is okay, then maybe once a year. So how often you are followed up with your blood or the blood pressure depends on how high the level of the blood pressure. So if it's very high, for example, they can say, come back again in two weeks. We we'll check your blood pressure and we do a blood test as well because the tablet they are giving you might be affecting the kidney. So they may say, come back. We we'll check your blood pressure today. In two weeks' time, we want you to come back and do a blood test as well because there's some um, tablets that they will give that if instead of your blood pressure coming down, uh, actually it's going up, it means that you have some complications. So they may say, um, do the blood, uh, blood test in two weeks. So it depends on the level of when to do the blood test. Thank you. So this question is for Sister Bola. What's the recommended daily quantity of carbohydrate? <laughs> That's a very good question. I don't normally recommend, and with my ministry, I don't, we don't weigh food. You can see everything you've been eating is more plant-based. So I don't recommend, if you wake up in the morning, instead of having seven slices of bread, you can have two. You can stir fry some spinach with that, with egg, you are good to go. For me to eat bread, we take like three times a year. And I eat sourdough bread. I don't normally do it because I know it's not good for me. So at lunchtime, I eat morning. I'm a morning person, so I eat in the morning. 
and I eat late in the evening, uh, not late in the evening, and eat my dinner. And by the time I finish my good meal in the morning, sometimes I'm not feeling really hungry at night, I just have salad and fish. So we recommended daily carbohydrates to me is just eat, but make sure there's a lot of veggies when you are eating. Because by the time you start weighing your food, you are holding some food, you are weighing, it just drives you crazy. My client lose weight, does not stop. You understand what it means? I think I looked after somebody three weeks now. She lost, no, two weeks now. She lost two kilo already for just changing her food. So I know we want to change, you know, want to eat carbohydrates and all that. And the ministry is not about don't eat carbohydrates. You can see every, every food you've been having, they still have carbohydrates in it, but they are good. They, they are fiber. They get into the system like a sponge. They wash what is not meant to be there. And you are good to go. And you don't get tired. With our food, you finish eating. And all you want to do is to sleep. You don't even wash your hand. When I was sick, I was going through that. And I asked people around me, every time I finish eating, I feel sleepy. What is happening? They told me it's black people syndrome, that you don't worry about it. Food is supposed to be a petrol. You put it in the car, you start the car, you are ready to go. Any food I eat now, then I fall asleep. I know that's a killing food. So, thank you. Next question is, how can I keep a blood sugar below seven? I think you've heard it in that response. It's just that simple. So, How to keep blood sugar below seven is change your diet. Go for a walk. We don't need three square meals, but if you need it, add more veggie to it. As simple as that. You will wake up in the morning, you have two slices of bread. You are not hungry. You can delay your breakfast. Some of my clients, when they wake up in the morning, their sugar is nine. Then I tell them, go for a walk. Because the insulin is not entering to the cell, if that makes sense. If you remember that picture, you have so much food in the system, but they're not getting to where it's needed. But when you go for that walk, like the little movement we did earlier, something has happened. Then the, the sugar drop. Then that's how to get it down. And if you don't sleep as well, you, you discover that you are secreting the visceral fat, the sugar is not going down because when you don't sleep, the pancreas is not resting. A lot of things accumulate to blood sugar. Just going to ask the caveat to that question. Um, the person who asked the question is, are you diabetic or, or not? Because if you are diabetic and you want to Keep your, you want to know how to keep your blood sugar less than seven, you have to consider other factors before you answer that question. Because if you're diabetic and you are on insulin, you are taking a tablet called glycoside, you are at risk of developing low blood sugar, which is a killer. So before you start knowing how to reduce your blood sugar to seven, we want to know whether you are diabetic and what medications you are taking. I think this is the same question. What do I do when my blood sugar level goes to 28, 29? I think doctor already answered that. If you are diabetic and it's too high, change your food. Go back to the source. If you're having custard, you are having semolina, semovita, a bar. All that will increase your blood sugar. And if you keep going back to your doctor, they're just changing your medication. So it's all back to the root. So if your blood sugar is more than 28, did you yeah, say? 28, 29. Yes, if your blood sugar is 28, 29, you are diabetic. The first thing you have to do, if you have the test that you are using to check uh, whether you have ketone in your urine, you must do that for because there is an emergency diabetic yes. ketoacidosis. 
which is a very serious, you need to go to hospital for or treatment. So the first thing to do, if you have that, you should check that first before you start adjusting anything at all. Now, is it good to drink coffee? There's a little bit of a yes or no with that. I think you can have, but don't overdo it. Do it more in the morning. It's antioxidants. I don't take coffee because once I take it, my brain just go wild. And I can feel some heart palpitation as well. You can do coffee. One minute they are telling us don't do it because of the caffeine is vasoconstriction. But you can have coffee, but have it very early in the morning, not late when it's your bedtime. Anything we are doing, even all the healthy food we had today, if you overdo it, it's not good for you. So everything in moderation. I think yes, if you're a coffee person. But there's a coffee on the table, which is called dandelion coffee. That helps to detox the liver. It smells like coffee, it tastes like coffee, but it's not coffee. So when I take coffee from my client that cannot sleep and a lot of health issues, I introduce that to them. And immediately they took over and started drinking. So our topic is inseparable relationship between the heart and your kidneys. So coffee, as Mokita has said, so much of everything is bad in moderation because it can cause the blood, the tiny blood vessels to sort of uh, reduce their diameter. And if that happens, that increases your blood pressure. And if that increases your blood pressure, that has impact on your heart as well. And then the vicious circle that we discussed during our presentation with the kidney and the heart. So if you are uh, hypertensive, it will do you good to reduce your coffee intake. Thank you. Is there a substitute for bread, beans, and rice? Can, can we substitute olive oil with some flour or um, canola oil? Um, substitute for olive oil is good. Make sure it's extra virgin olive oil. Any other oil, coconut oil is not bad. Everything in moderation. Can I get up and just show? Substitute for olive oil. Bread. Bread. And beans. And beans, okay. I think I can answer it without getting up. The beans wise, the beans you had this afternoon is called mug beans. Let me get up, sorry. I'm a moving person. No, you. The we've seen corn oil, yes. When you pop corn, does oil come out of it? So where is the oil coming from? Popcorn. Where is the oil called vegetable oil? If I'm making sense. So things have been done, refined, add some chemicals to something, and they are giving it to us as oil. So olive oil, extra virgin is excellent. You can do avocado oil, but whatever oil you are doing, very small. Sometimes we think it's too expensive. You hold on to this oil. Let's say this is vegetable oil, yeah? Or corn oil or any other oil that is refined oil. It's going to be one ninety nine. But if this is olive oil, it's going to be four pounds. So they are not stupid. I used to tell my husband in the past that, ah, all this egg, one crate of egg is one ninety nine, And this egg, which is organic or free range, is two pounds. I said, egg is egg, Joe. I'm the one sick. He said, ah, well, you boy is not stupid, though. Let's buy the small one. I said, no. But I saw the repercussion in my heart. So olive oil, extra virgin, we brought that oil today. Despite all the food we cook, about five or six different types of food within, it's not up to half yet. So you just need a teaspoon or two teaspoons when you are cooking. So beans-wise, we've been using only beans, or only beans since our mother born us. So... Today we had mug beans, which is green beans. That is good for blood sugar. This is black beans. I don't know if any of us have seen this before. This is black beans, black turtle beans. The, the darker 
the vegetables, the fruits, these are the more antioxidants they have. And when they are antioxidant, they actually help to get rid of bad things in the body. Am I making sense? So it's like mommy is wearing that today. Let's assume for the next three months she's still wearing it. I said, it's nice. But later, the body, you, you don't say anything again. The same thing applied to the food. If we've been eating one food for the past 60 years, or long beans, it's about time to go to the store and look for another beans to eat. So your body can get the advantage, if I'm, if I'm making sense. But what is this beans carry? Is it in Oloni? Oloni, you've had Oloni for a long time. When you've been for a long time, it's about time to change to another bin. There's a lot of beans on the table. You can check that later. And uh, I think this is the olive oil. I've answered that. I think I've answered yes. here. Yes. Then uh, bread. bread. <laughs> yes, you can have bread. Substitute for bread. If you still want to have bread, there's one particular bread called sourdough bread. There's some people now, one of my clients, when after nagging for years, she started preparing uh, bread made from uh, almond flour. You can use buckwheat flour to make bread, or you can do without bread. Uh, can I have the Brussels sprout, please? The broccoli sprout. Sorry. Because I'm a breakfast person, I can wake up early in the morning sometimes and have... Uh, thank you and have a cabbage amala. Do you know cabbage amala? Cabbage, you can turn cabbage to amala. It's because we didn't have time. If you have time, you can come to the kitchen and show you if there's blender. Anyway, let's be serious. Uh, this is a broccoli sprout. One day I was washing plates and I poured hot water on this and I had it. And I noticed all day, I didn't feel hungry at all. And I was trying to think what's going on? What's happening? But this contains something, chromium. Chromium stop you from craving. So then I turn this to breakfast at home. I will stir fry this sometimes. I put egg with it. Sometimes I put sardine with it. Sometimes I put uh, beans with it. And this become my breakfast. So you can still have your bread, but you can look for sourdough bread. You can have plantain with egg, add some spinach to it. You can add some sardine to it. So you can add sweet potato as well. So these are the substitutes. You can do grain. As we're getting older, sugar is starting to hang around the bodies a little bit. So we can do grain, the, the grain one. I normally do the grain. Me and my husband eat one of these for breakfast, not two, one. And once we have it, then we discover that we are not hungry. And I always tell you, we are eating for our brain. Those days we used to eat a lot. It's just, if you eat little, you'll be fine. If you eat big, your belly will just expand and keep taking it. And we can have yam as well. Just small slice of yam. Mix it with uh, egg, with sauce. Great, good to go. But remember, whenever you are having your food, make sure it's balanced. Make sure you are having balance. Balance means you are having the protein, the good carbohydrate, the fat, everything is perfect there. Then your sweet potato, this is the one we are used to, the one with the, I can't remember the color inside this. Yeah. That's the sweet potato, the one we are used to. That's one. This is another one which is more common in Africa. This is another sweet potato. And this is the, this is the most expensive part of it. But we don't need to do the expensive one. I'm just showing you that there's a lot of sweet. This is purple inside. As I've said, the more colored food you are having, the more antioxidant. You discover that you don't crave, you are looking good. You can move, you can do a lot of things that you can't do before. Every time I climb in the stairs in my house, thank you, sis. I, I always, I don't take it for granted because this is not what I used to do. And I'm climbing and I'm saying, God, I just want to say thank you. I just want to say thank you. Even going to the toilet sometimes, opening my bar where I look at it. Sometimes I call my husband, please come. And we rush, poor man, we come. And I say, I've just opened my bar. I don't used to go every day before. So God is good. Is seeded bread good? Brown seeded bread. It's okay. 
If you can do sourdough, I keep going back to sourdough. S-O-U-R-G-H-O-U-R. Yeah, just put sourdough bread on your Google to come. It's available in all the stores now. It's just because they fermented the flour. Some people eat bread and they get bloated. It's because of the gluten inside the bread. But because they fermented the flour of that. In the past, when I was growing up back home in Africa, they put the bread or the dough inside the bakery. The following day, they come back to bake the bread. But now, before 10 minutes, bread is ready. So everybody is eating this gluten, and the gluten is affecting our guts. And people are having leaky guts. So the sourdough is not bad. You can have sourdough. Seeded is fine. Which potato? It's available, depends, not on this, not, you can't get it in the main store. The, the common one is in the main store. But from the Asian stores, you can get all the different types. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. And then, does intake, this is from Dr. Kelly. Does intake of plenty of water actually reduce moderate blood pressure? So I think we need to uh, um, we need to classify what we mean by if you drink a lot of water because we normally say drink two to three liters of water a day. So when you say drink a lot of water, what is the definition of a lot of water? If you are talking about five liters or six liters, we go back to our, our presentation again about the kidney and the heart. So if the heart is overloaded, it will impact the kidney. And if the kidney is overloaded, it will impact the heart. So if you drink too much water, more than three liters a day, then you are overloading the heart. And we say that the heart is the pump, is the engine of our body. So you are going to reduce the, the, the force with which the heart is pumping blood into the body. And if there is overload, then you don't have enough fluid to go into your kidney. That will lead to high blood pressure. And then your kidney get dehydrated. And if you have underlying primary kidney problem, that will be exacerbated. So two to three liters of water a day is good. But when you say too much, depends on what you mean. Five, six, seven, yes, too much. Then, um, if you reduce, or if I reduce my salt intake and my blood pressure is still uh, increasing, what would you advise? So, blood pressure is just one of, salt intake is just one of the risk factors for developing blood pressure. There are other risk factors causing high blood pressure. So, for example, if your, if your weight and height is not appropriate for your, your weight is not appropriate for your height, the body mass index, that's your weight in kilograms and your height in meters squared is not within the normal range, that even if you stop taking salt, that will still impact on your blood pressure. And if you have underlying a kidney problem or if you have underlying uh, maybe high cholesterol, that will also impact on the blood pressure. So it's not just the salt that is a risk factor for, for blood pressure problem. I think we have to consider sleep as well. We don't sleep. From one, I don't want to say it. It's really painful. It's really painful. We don't sleep. Some people, they tell you, I only sleep two hours at night. And because I have to join this, I have to join that, I have to join this. It's really killing. And by the time you know it, sometimes it's too late. So sleeping is very important. 
Exercise is very important. Get in touch with people as well. Do something to renew your mind. Meditation is very important. It's just a matter of starting something. It's not just about praying for religion. Do you understand what I mean? I have like a ritual thing I do in the morning. After doing my prayer, I have to go for 10,000 steps every morning. If I don't do it, it's like the heaven is going to come down. And I'm so used to it. I used to have blood pressure. A lot of my clients with blood pressure, they just turn up with their GP and they told, the one particular was told, your blood pressure is 80 something over something, which was too low. But she was still taking all her tablets. She was just doing everything. You know, it's not about salt alone, as doctor said. It's not just salt alone. And you must take salt. Salt is good for you, but in moderation. So you sleep, manage stress. I can't tell you don't have stress. We must manage stress. Sorry, I just want to add a bit of what, um, when you were talking about meditation, and I'm quite uh, conscious of the fact that uh, uh, this assembly, we are Christians. There are different types of meditation. So the meditation, I assume, which I think it is, is not the meditation that outside is, that is not scriptural. It must be scriptural based. So I just want to add that. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Right. Now, uh, non-stick pots. What's your take on non-stick pots? Or non-stick pot. Do you have any anything about that? Uh, non-stick pots just have um what's the name of this? Peter doing show me where she um Teflon. There's Teflon inside non-stick pots. You notice after you use non-stick pot for some time, it starts shipping up. On the good side. Or the manufacturer is good. They tell you once you see that chip coming out, then don't use it again, get rid of it. Personally, and what I encourage my clients to do is to use stainless steel pots. The moment you walk into my house, you just notice, ah, this, why, why is this your pot? I said, it's not about the expensive, it's not expensive, it's just stainless steel. You use it and use it and use it because what is coming out of that and you are using it to fry and you, you sometimes you don't want to get rid of it because sometimes they are expensive, not like they are cheap, even the, the non-stick one. Yeah, so I think we should just try the, um, the stainless steel, not the aluminum. Try to get rid of your aluminum slowly. When it's time to get new one, get stainless steel because I'm not sure what aluminum is doing to our brain to, to us generally. And this, on this note, I might just mention whatever we are using as deodorant, let's make sure it doesn't have aluminum, it doesn't have paraben, and it doesn't have alcohol. Very, very important. Thank you. I think um, this last two questions is to do with uh, recipe. So all this that you've done today, one, first of all, you have recipe book so that, you know, we can get the recipe book. And then if you can just talk us through some of the things that you've done today. And then, um, yes, so that's the last question. Thank you. Um, so I should go through, I can't find my phone, but I can go through it. The veggies that we've used today, uh, broccoli, asparagus. Let me get my phone so I can you can flow. Thank you, sir. Uh, from the beans, when you do any of those beans that I mentioned, please make sure you soak them or you parboil before you eat, because beans do have something called nitric acid, which steal things from us. So once you soak it, you see the bubbles coming out. That's why some people can't take beans, they finish eating and they get bloated. So it's important. 
Uh, we use the same vegetables for all the uh, dishes we prepare. Olive oil, which is the oil we use. We use organic kalo beef. I call it Maggi, so you can relate it back to Maggi. So we, we did the kalo Maggi, the kalo beef one, the vegetable one, and the chicken one. I use the three. I'm not sure if I use the mushroom. So it comes in different flavor. I tend to use the beef one more, mainly because it tastes like the old Maggi that we are used to. Uh, the salt that I use, I didn't use a lot of salt, but I normally use Celtic salt. C-E-L-I-A-C, Celtic salt. You can use Himalayan salt, you can use sea salt. I use Celtic salt because sometimes I just use that and it just gives me the taste. I don't have to use uh, kalu at all. Uh, all the peppers, the green, the red, all the bell peppers, I use all that as well. Uh, carrot, asparagus, courgette, kale, Parsley as uh, fresh parsley and as um, um, rosemary fresh as well. Uh, Brussels sprout was there. Uh, spring onion, red and white onion, garlic, ginger. And uh, I use coconut cream mainly for the beans to turn it to beans curry. And the menu we prepared, and all the apps five that I use. Uh, I can just tell you everything on the list so you can get it, get them all together. Uh, Spanish pap paprika, you can do paprika. Uh, kumi seed, grounded kumi seed. Coriander seed, grounded. Sage, S-A-G-E, grand coriander, uh, coriander, thyme, turmeric, grand turmeric, miss herbs, grand fenugreek, grand black pepper, ginger, you can have the grand ginger because sometimes it's not all the time you want to shop the fresh ginger, cayenne pepper, and uh, oregano, basil, and the menu for today, we had beans curry, we had vegetable pasta, cauliflower rice. <laughs> Try and remind me, I, can't, I only remember three. We had a cabbage, cabbage and that's the last one, cabbage and um, chickpeas and fried rice. We have lentils and uh, chickpeas fried rice as well. Yeah, I think that's all we prepared. We have about 50 different type of dishes. You just hold on to the cabbage and you think, what can you use this for? I sometimes just go to the market in the morning when I do my morning work and I'm thinking, I think Holy Spirit just leads me what to do. I just bring cabbage home and I look at the cabbage. What can I turn this to? I turn it to a mala. Turn it to rice, turn it to this, turn it to that, and that become a dish for me. So, any other question? Thank you. Please, I just want to use this opportunity to say thank you to my sister, sister doing in person. She's my mentor. She's my everything. She's always so sister, do you come here, please? It's wrong. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I believe uh, the time we have spent here today have been productive, educational, and instructive, and uh, we really appreciate them taking the time to come and uh, share with us today and uh, show us how we can uh, uh, enjoy better health, enjoy long life, and uh, be 
uh, more productive and be around for uh, a longer time here on planet Earth. Like I started saying at the beginning, God did instruct his people in the Old Testament as to what is good food and as to what is bad food. The fact that an animal, you know, or rather most animals are meat, doesn't mean the, all of them are to be eaten and uh, so on and so forth. And then God was very particular about what is clean and what is unclean. And like the saying goes, they used to have a program or telly they, that um, they titled, You Are What You Eat. And that's basically the summary of what uh, they have shared with us today. I, our sister says most of our health challenges, you know, they start from the gut. What are we eating? What are we eating? Like I told my congregation before, it's uh, 2004 that uh, my office used to be close to her, you know, her clinic in uh, Tottenham. And uh, I used to pop around to see her from time to time at my break time. And um, I had a couple of uh, revelatory dreams that um, it was very clear the meaning that I need to do something about my head, about my weight and my head generally and the rest of it. Otherwise, I was a dead man. And then I went to her. She did uh, my BMI and she told me I was clinically obese. And I needed to, because she wasn't my GP, I needed to go and see my GP that, uh, to check me out and uh, whatever. Anyway, to cut the long story short, the GP uh, reluctantly gave me a, a referral letter to go to North Windows uh, Hospital where they checked out my heart and uh, I was really in trouble. And you know God <clears throat> is a good God. He doesn't want to, or to die before our time. If I didn't do something, I probably would have lived long enough to pastor this uh, church. So, uh, I'm Mike Mudok, or somebody used to say that Christians are in the healing business. They are not in the head business. And we ought to be in the head business because God doesn't want us to get sick. He wants us to en enjoy good life. And like her sister also said earlier, you know, God has given us a sound mind. And the Bible says we have the mind of Christ. And there are certain things we have to do for ourselves and we don't need God to do for us because God has given us soundness of mind and we ought to be able to make good decisions, good choices, because our life at the end of the day, you know, they are a product of the choices we make, you know, the decisions we make. And, you know, you can drive yourself to an early grave and you can sentence yourself to a life of, you know, one head challenge after the other by what you eat and by your general lifestyle. Almost every one of us, when we go and see the GP, they will always ask you, do you take alcohol? Do you smoke? Because those things are creating a lot of problems for the NHS. That is costing the NHS billions. You know, most of the head, you know, challenges that take people to the hospital, to the GP and whatever, they are related to those kind of habits and lifestyle. And the same thing is applicable to food if we don't eat right and we don't move our body. You know, those are two basic things. After that, my experience, I changed my diet. I started, you know, going for long walks. In three months, I lost 10 kg and I have maintained it ever since. From 75 to 65 fat, it's, lately it's been 63, you know. But I noticed we went to IGOC and then uh, the take care of ministers there. I started eating like I normally don't eat, you know, <laughs> because it's free. You know, free food tastes a little bit better. <laughs> I normally don't eat cooked food until, you know, once, once a day is when I, I eat one cooked meal in the evening, you know. But when you go to IGOC, there's, uh, you know, uh, the, the light, uh, whatever, and then there's the heavy one. And all in the afternoon and the rest of it. And then shortly after then, we went to Dubai for several, eight days or so. And of course, because we paid for, you know, bed and breakfast, you go there alone. <laughs> I came back feeling heavy. 
And then my wife did my, I know, she normally does my, my blood test, you know, since that uh, time, actually, I monitor my blood sugar. She does my blood test every Saturday. And then the thing shot up to 5.6, which I haven't, you know, seen in a long time. You know, otherwise, it's normally 4.5, 4.6. I really was alarmed. I had indulged myself. And then, meanwhile, I got a message from the GP telling me I'm due for my annual blood test and the rest of it. I wasn't going to do any blood test <laughs> in this my state because <laughs> this, is not, this is not normal for me. <laughs> So I only went for the blood test last Monday. And of course, you know, the Saturday before I went for the blood test, it had come down to 4.5. So it's a question of discipline. Discipline. We need to live disciplined lives. We need to exercise. We need to move our body. And thank God for the music and the jumping and whatever just now. Yes, when I'm unable to go out because I don't like getting wet, you know, I need to exercise, but I don't like getting soaked in the rain because I need to, you know, go for long, long walks. But uh, we can also exercise and move our bodies and burn calories in our body. Thank God for Samsung Head for those of us that carry Samsungs. I'm sure, you know, iPhone, they have uh, an app that helps you to monitor how many steps you take, you know, how many calories you are burning, the distance you have walked and the rest of it. And I religiously... You know, have a look to see how far I have done daily and the rest of it. And you feel so much better, so much heavier. You know, so it's not just one. You must eat right, exercise right, and you will enjoy better health. You will, you will not have cause to be visiting the GP frequently and uh, going to the hospital. So let's look after ourselves and uh, God will help us and keep us fit and healthy and he will fulfill the number of our days in Jesus' name. I want to thank everyone for coming today. I really expected to see a lot more people today, but we thank God we didn't start very well, but uh, we have ended uh, so much better. And uh, just to remind those of us who have come to you know, join us today, we are here every Sunday from 10.30 a.m., and by one o'clock, we are done. We have our, ch our children's services upstairs to my left. Our teenagers meet upstairs to my right. And uh, we do uh, minister to them at their level. And we also meet during the week, every Tuesday evening by 7 p.m. for our Bible study. And on Thursdays, we meet by 7 p.m. as well for our prayer meetings. And uh, you are very much welcome to be a part of our weekly services if uh, you are not committed anywhere else, and God will bless you for doing so. So, one more time, uh, we appreciate Dr. Christiana Ride for her time today, and our sister, Bola Ajewale. God will bless you richly, and uh, expand your coasts, expand your domain of influence. He will yet bless you and make you a blessing in Jesus' name. And uh, that's about all I want to say, and thank God it's four minutes to three. We are not going beyond our time today, even though we did this start on time. And uh, you don't have to rush off. You want to have a chat with her and uh, see a bit of uh, She didn't really answer the question about whether she has put a book together. I think she needs to, you know, put uh, all these uh, recipes and her story into a book, and I'm sure it will sell and uh, be a blessing to, you know, the body of Christ and to the world, people who are interested in the uh, you know, how to eat right and how to stay fit and healthy. Shall we rise as we uh, say the final prayers and uh, go and prepare for tomorrow's uh, services? Father, we want to give you praise again and glory and honor and adoration for your presence here, for your power here, for your glory here. Thank you, Father, for leading us to organize this Health Awareness Seminar today. We believe, Father, this was a program we needed to organize and to be a part of. Thank you, Father, for everyone that you have used to make it the success that it has become today. We give you the praise. We give you the glory. Because you are the God that works in us both to will and to do of your good pleasure. Father, as your people live here today, I prophesy over them that they will live long, they will live strong. 
They will live long to be blessed and to be a blessing. None of us here and everyone who will watch this program subsequently will die before our time. You said you will fulfill the number of our days. You said, Father, when we serve you, you will bless our bread, you will bless our water. And you will take sickness away from our midst. None will miscarry and none, Lord God, yes, will be barren in our midst. That you will fulfill the number of our days. You also said in your word that you will, Lord, satisfy us with long life. We appropriate long life today. We, Father, we will not just live long, we will live strong. We will not lie down on the bed of languishing. We will not be among those going in and out of the doctor's surgery, going in and out of the hospital. In the name of Jesus, Father, we subscribe to good health today. We subscribe, Lord, for long life today. We give you praise and we give you glory. We want to come in tomorrow's services unto you, that tomorrow's services will be Holy Ghost services. They will be anointed services. There will be times of refreshing, Lord, in your presence. That, Father, tomorrow our gathering together shall be unto you. For unto you shall the gathering of your people be. Tomorrow reveal yourself to your people by your word and by signs and by wonders. Anoint your servants, the ministers, to speak as the oracles of the living God, to minister with the grace and with the ability that only you can supply, that tomorrow we will have a full house here. You will draw men and women, boys and girls into our midst here, from the east, from the west, from the north, and from the south, that tomorrow you will help us to worship you in spirit and in truth. We give you praise today. We give you honor today. You brought us here safely, we will return home safely. Thank you, Father, for today. Even now, I release your healing grace over anyone who needs your healing touch. From the crowns of their heads to the soles of their feet. Yes, we need to uh, live healthy and, Lord, maintain uh, healthy lifestyles. But you have also said you are the Lord who heals us. Father, we release your healing grace today over anyone that needs it. Lord, it is well with us, spirit, soul, and body. We give you praise today. We give you honor. In Jesus' name, we pray. Shall we share the grace in fellowship? May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely. Goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. God bless you. Have a great weekend and have a great service tomorrow. God bless you.